Tell me about the time you spent in Cleveland. How did you enjoy it? Cleveland. <laughs> I love Cleveland. It was great. It's a great place. Uh, you know, it's where the Russos are from. So, so right off the bat, we all kind of felt like we were at home. They sent out this big letter to everyone about, you know, where to go and what to see and how to handle Cleveland. And, you know, you, you just felt right away you were in a very welcoming environment. Can you believe that uh, you guys were able to shut down the shoreway for three weeks? I felt awful about that. <laughs> I mean, after like two or three days, it was like the cover of the newspaper, like, Captain America ruins the commute. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I think I tweeted something. I felt I felt really awful about you know because I I went from Boston and when when one little um, when there's one minor disturbance in, in in the traffic environment, everyone is furious. I know you were a bit hesitant to sign on with this Marvel deal at first. Now you're three films in. How are you feeling about it now? The best decision of my life. I really, really would have been kicking myself if I hadn't done these movies. Um, they're great. They're great. They, they've afforded me a million, a million different opportunities. And, and, and best of all, they're, they're, they're good movies. They're movies I'm proud of. It would really be, it would be a bit of a nightmare if, if I really didn't like the product. Uh, but, but, but I'm so behind Marvel and they really have the winning formula. Do you see any of yourself in either Cap or in Steve Rogers? I hope to. That's the goal. Any day you're having a bad day, you think, would Steve Rogers do this? Probably not. So get it together, Chris. Um, you know, he, he really is the, he, he set the standard. He, he's the, he's the, the barometer by which you know, kind of measure yourself. And, um, he, he's just a good man, and, 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 and uh, I, I would be honored to see parts of him in me. Here's the thing that always gets me. You're obviously in incredible shape during the movie, but I know what food looks like on set. Hmm. How were you able to avoid that stuff and still look great on camera? You know, I'm, I'm pretty lucky in the sense that my, my metabolism is pretty quick. Food, the food isn't always the biggest conflict for me. I, I feel like, you know, for me to get in shape, I just gotta spend time in the gym. I don't have to be as strict with the diet as I do uh, needing to be strict with the hours spent working out. But when you're on the set 12, 14 plus hours a day, how are you able to then sleep and then also make time for the gym? This is what happens. Okay. You get yourself as big as you can, and then as you're shooting, <laughs> you slowly get smaller. It's just what happens. Uh, throughout the movie, you just slowly lose your mass. So you need to come to set as big as you can possibly get yourself in anticipation of exhaustion, and, and you're just going to start shedding pounds. Your street's back to normal? Yeah. Took a little while, but yeah. Took a little while, <laughs> everything we tore up, did you put back? <laughs> everything okay now? It's, I guess so, you know. Uh, people can finally commute to work people now. People were like straight bitched out when we were there. Like, well. What the fuck? It was like three you miles of the whole a, freeway? <laughs> three miles of a pretty major artery, but. It's all worth it though. I, that scene is incredible. Totally all worth it, oh, right? It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. And when the people of Cleveland see it, they'll go, hey, I was in that traffic jam. <laughs> That's right. You shot the very first sequence in Cleveland where you're in the SUV and it's getting shot up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, people in Cleveland were going crazy. That yeah, there were a lot of people looking out office windows and going, wow, who's in that car? And they're blowing that car up. Right. Yeah. Does it bother you when you're on set and fans are, are, are watching you do your thing? No. I used to do this weird little thing in New York before I became a movie actor called Theater where there were always people watching me work. So I really like people around watching me work. I feel like there's so many layers to Nick Fury. If you were to describe him, how would you describe him? Um, if I were to describe him? So that would mean that I understand Nick Fury. Okay. <laughs> you know. Um, Patriot. Um, Ruthless, um, smart, um, elusive. That's enough words. Did you know in the first Captain America film that your character was going to go down this path and become the villain in this one? I didn't. I, I, I knew that was one possibility of, of them continuing the story for my character, but um, I, didn't, I didn't at the time, no. I. I was certainly hoping um, and uh, trying to cover my bases when I was doing that movie that just in case they were that, uh, I don't know, there'd be little things in, in that film that I could do to sort of 
maybe reference what was to come, but I didn't. It's such an interesting uh, character arc because you're the buddy in the first film and then you're the absolute bad guy in this one. How different is that for you approaching that as an actor? Very exciting. I mean, it just you just get more of an opportunity to show different sides of, of you know, a character. I mean, this character is so complex and tragic in a way and um, there's just so many sides to him and, and uh, hopefully that we'll see in the future even. Um, so that, that was all just, you know, a lot of fun and realizing I had a lot of homework to do and, and uh, but I, I, I felt challenged and I felt good about it. The Winter Soldier really doesn't have a lot of lines, but he emotes so much emotion through his eyes only. How difficult is that for you to be uh, basically conveying the emotions of a scene without saying anything? Um, <laughs> I was going to say, well, mo I know I, he didn't have a lot of lines, but I was talking to myself in my head all the time, uh, which I probably was, but <laughs> it, it is difficult. I, I mean, for me, it actually helped in a way because um, I, I, I felt when I was looking at myself in, in the mirror, I, I couldn't recognize myself at all. You know, I felt like all my little go-tos and so on were stripped by this mask and sort of the way that I looked, and uh, it was actually an interesting challenge because I, I, I felt then I had to sort of pay attention to the way um, I behaved, the way I moved, the physicality, and, and um, yeah, I, I was always conscious of, you know, any any tight shot of the eyes and what was I going to communicate, what, what could I do with that, and so it, it's hard, but but it was it was good, it was fun. If Captain America 3 was shooting in Cleveland, how would you feel about that? Done. Done. I'm in. I am <laughs> in. <laughs> Tell me about putting on this suit, and what's it like? Uh, you know, is it mobile? What's it like? Uh, it was great, man. There's nothing better for your confidence than putting on a superhero suit and walking around. I'll tell you that. It was, uh, it was great. I was, Chris and I have been friends for a long time, and I always joke about how he looks in a suit. So when I put on my suit, it was just, it was a barrage of just jokes and insults. But I enjoy it. I mean, just walking around with it, you just feel like a manly man. <laughs> this must be incredible for your psyche to keep doing these alpha male roles. Like, you're a superhero <laughs> in this one. You are a bodybuilder in pain and gain. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it makes you feel good about yourself. I, uh, lucky for me, when I did pain and gain, I got in such good shape that once we started this, it just, it turned over into it because, you know, Chris is like a Greek god, man. And I was I kept telling him, yo, I need tighter shirts. It's the first time <laughs> in my career, I was like, my clothes are too big. I need tighter clothes, you know? But it was, it's all good. Cap 3 is gonna be a whole different. I'm straight up a uh, box of shorts and baby oil, a whole movie, <laughs> whole movie. Congratulations to both of you guys on the film. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, being man. from Cleveland, what does it mean that the bulk of this film was shot in Cleveland? It means everything. I mean, it's you know, this is our third film that we've shot there. Obviously, we grew up there. We have a very emotional attachment to the city. We love the city, love the people of the city. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think it's a, as exciting for people in the city to see it on screen as it is for us. Yeah, we know the city so well. That's one of the reasons why it's so great to shoot there. Is like we we, we can find exactly what we're looking for, and uh, it's, it, it's a great looking city. It's got a great variety of looks, and we just like love mining it for all our favorites. So it's cool. Did you guys ever imagine you'd be granted the access in Cleveland that you had? No, we're incredibly grateful for it because obviously it, uh, it 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 helps the movie tremendously. And um, there's uh, you know one of the best action sequences in the film was the you know the infamous causeway sequence that uh, you know required us shutting down the shoreway. But uh, it, uh, you know, it looks fantastic on film. I think it's a great uh, postcard for the city to the world. Uh, and I think people are going to be very impressed with how the, uh, the city looks on film. Captain America 3 certainly sounds like it's going to happen. What are the odds you guys would come back to Cleveland to shoot that? You know, I, I, I don't know. We're just starting to break story now, so we have to, we have to see where the story goes. You know, we can't, and then once we figure out what the, is required of the movie, then we'll you know, figure out where we're going to shoot it. If you guys could be a Clevelander for one day other than yourselves, right. who would you want to be and why? That's an interesting That's a question. Good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Jimmy Haslam, because I would love to own the Browns, I'll tell you that. I mean, a, a You'd long, want the good stuff of Jimmy Haslam. Yes. No, I'm just saying I would like to be Browns owner. How about that? I've been a long-suffering Cleveland sports fan for many years, and, uh, and you know, I would love to see things done right for once. What do you think? That's a great pick, and I'll go in the opposite direction. I would say I would say our dad. You know, we've, we've you know, great, great admirers of him. He's had a great life and great great career in Cleveland, and he's been a great Clevelander and uh, through his political and legal career, and it's uh, something we really admire and respect. I know you guys are both big Browns fans. If you were the GM and it was draft day, who, who would you guys take this year? It's interesting. It depends who falls the four, but, I, you know, right. I got my money on Sammy Watkins. I love him. I think, uh, you know, uh, Ray Farmer says that he drafts for uh, uh, you know, value. Uh, and if Sammy Watkins is available at number four, I think that's pretty good value. So, Do you don't think we're going to get a quarterback? It's interesting. I mean, there, there was an article I think Terry Pluto did about quarterbacks drafted in the first round and how many of them have been to either the playoffs or the Super Bowl. Uh, uh, and I think it was one quarterback, and it was Flacco who was drafted late in the first round. And uh, all the other quarterbacks, you know, talk about Russell Wilson or Kaepernick, these are all late, you know, mid-round guys. Right. So I don't know. Do you spend that pick on a, uh, you know, do you spend that that fourth pick on a quarterback? 